I have awakened our funny man far too early this morning. I'm on the East Coast. He's on the West Coast. We've revert. We've got all, everything all confused. And Brian, are you are you with us? Are you with us? Are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Ryan White, tomorrow is a very, very big day. Histrionics aside, because everybody says this is the most important earnings day in the history of Tesla. But every one of them is, I think. Um, histrionics aside, how are you feeling right now, personally? You know, tell us, tell us your sad story as we go into tomorrow's earnings report. So I'm not I'm not worried because I don't look at the one day or six week or even six month kind of uh, outlook. I'm looking at the long term and the analysts are already suggesting this is going to be a bumpy one. Um, I am sure it will look brutal compared to many quarters. Uh, and I'm expecting to see some upside here and there, uh, a few bright spots, I think, we might see some overperformance on things like Megapack um, in terms of uh, there might be another upside in terms of recognition of FSD deferred revenue. Um, but there will be, you know, it. I think Wall Street has lowered their expectations enough that a beat is possible. A beat compared to their expectations. So compared to their I, expectations, I'm seeing a dollar thirty. I'm uh, I'm sorry. Th yeah, dollar thirty seven. Right? Am I in the right? I'm getting confused I, early in the market. Well, it's not early. I, for me, but... I don't even follow those things, so oh. I couldn't tell you. Oh, I've I'll seen see. some people as low as fifty two cents. Fifty two cents. That's right. I'm I'm see. I was putting the adding that dollar on there. I guess I'm just terribly confused. I've seen as low as thirty seven cents. Okay. Yeah. But what you're not seeing and what we have seen from some of the legacy guys is it's not a negative number. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Optimist channel. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Brian, for helping with that. It's not a negative number. And I've seen uh, fair, at least one uh, fair. I think it was AJ who thinks that it could be positive cash flow a billion or more. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, there's some big restructuring costs coming up. Those won't hit until Q2. Mm -hmm. There's a likelihood of some new uh, subscription or FSD sales revenue. Those won't hit until Q2. Um, we're already a good chunk of the way into Q2, and we're just now finding out the where the dust settled on Q1. Meantime, you've got Polestar, who is months late on reporting some of their stuff that's legally required. And you that? may have... Uh, it's AJ again. Uh, AJ is a real firebrand. Mm -hmm. I like him. He picks more fights than he should, yeah. but some of them, um, I'm I'm willing to forgive that based on the quality of his data. Right. He posted on X yesterday or maybe early this morning saying, "Hey, uh, Polestar, I'm sure this is an oversight. Where's your format? It's due. It's over. You, but last year you published it." weeks earlier months earlier i don't remember now um what's going on guys yeah yeah real he real head scratcher well you know as i'm scratching my head that was great timing brian how did you do that that was amazing magic oh magic anyway so uh, but clearly anybody who's paid attention to the earnings calls and earnings reports knows that no matter what happens in the earnings report that because we have a slightly autistic leader <laughs> we can never figure out what's going to happen in the earnings call and in the earnings call he slight he sometimes slightly goes into various levels of autism and creates all kinds of chaos which i happen to love and which people who follow the stock love the chaos that he creates in the earnings calls but the street doesn't like it that much what are you hoping for in your in your dream the dream of dreams for tomorrow so for those for those out of the loop we're not being insulting um elon has disclosed that he is on the spectrum this is uh not an insult this is a recognition um when i you know you, you got to understand what's going on that was not a very good time in your 5k race he said of the one-legged man 
no, look, you got to you got to grade on a curve for these things. <laughs> um, there are two real possibilities. <laughs> Come on. There are two real possibilities. Yes. Uh, what One is that we get to see the level headed, balanced, um, stoic approach, which we've seen on a number of earnings calls. And the other is that we get the Elon who shows up and says, okay, these are dumb questions. Let's go to the YouTube questions instead. Uh, either one of those approaches can have an upside. Uh, we have seen Omar refer to this as wartime Elon, uh, to which Elon liked that post. Yes. And uh, he, based on the recent actions, there's a lot of uh, drama uh, going on at headquarters. Uh, it does feel like he's in wartime mode and not a part-time war this time. So that's exciting for shareholders. If you, uh, somebody pointed out on X, get mad because he's not doing enough because he's not putting in enough hours. And now you're mad because he's putting in hours, which is it guys. And I get that those aren't always the same people complaining, but a lot of times they are. People want to be upset. I expect him to be on the earnings call I expect to see some of his usual trademark flair, his excitement that we get for the for better or worse. And what I expect to see is no matter how good those numbers are, no matter how pretty he talk, I expect to see the stock go down the next day oh. because the stock always goes down the next day, no matter how good it is. You can beat Wall Street by 20 cents, 30, a dollar. Oh, it's terrible. Sell it. And if that happens, I am busy scrambling today to amass some powder, to find some powder, uh, because I'll uh, make a, a contribution to my IRA for the first time in quite some time. I, good idea. You know, I, I, I have a new theory of finance that if you really are looking to get more earnings, you, you need to buy more couches. <laughs> uh -huh. where it is the only place from which to harvest loose change randy understands this that is a quality right there the yeah it's very crazy to think that there were so many people looking at the stock and saying man when it got down into the low hundreds i should have bought i should have bought and then it went to the mid twos high twos it went up it went to 299 and change because randy got it right once last year I, I got to hang on to that one time, Brian. You, so let's you not do. Let's not lose sight of the 299.12, I think it was. And I had predicted 300. I'm claiming victory on that. And then it went up and people said, oh, man, I missed it. I missed it. Hey, uh, yeah, sometimes you miss the boat. Sometimes there's another boat coming. There's another one on the schedule. Uh, it's here now. Are you getting, well, I'm not getting on it now. Why would I buy now when it's down? Right. Oh my gosh. Because if you, uh, I had a comment on YouTube, a gentleman said, Brian, uh, I'm concerned that you might be a hyperbole. What would make you sell? Is there anything that would make you sell the stock? I said, absolutely. There's a whole lot of things. Well, one is, for example, if it be, if they issued a dividend, I would have to reconsider my position because a dividend to me means the end of growth. We just, we're making money now. We don't know what to do with it. I guess we'll just give some of it away. That doesn't strike me as the thing that I want. So that would be one. But there are a lot of things that could, to me, signal the end of it. Does that mean I would automatically sell? No, it means I would expand my horizons and, and determine, is there a better place to put my money today? Right. I had friends telling me that I was crazy to not buy NVIDIA when it had its massive run-up recently and nvidia has not uh, performed well since then how could it it once a stop once my friends are talking about it it's too late uh these yeah. are the same I, people I, I feel yeah i feel i feel very bad for the people that sold their tesla stock at 170 to buy nvidia at 950. <laughs> What did you think was going to happen? It's yeah. the same people who bought Tesla at 400 saying there's, there is no competition and there will never be competition. Well, it depends which market you're in. There's a lot of competition in China. There's some serious competition in Europe. 
uh, in Japan, competition isn't allowed. <laughs> right. So, right. Apparently. so <laughs> apparently, um, NVIDIA is the clear leader today, but that doesn't mean they're going to hold on to it forever. Today's chips are very competent and capable, which means in three years, everybody will be making chips as competent and capable as what NVIDIA makes right now. Uh, so, I've told, so, so I've told people that the two things I want tomorrow is I just want Elon to say, we have not delayed the Gen 3 uh, oh. retail vehicle. Uh, yes. We have not delayed it. We have not canceled it. I would be satisfied with we've not canceled, but I would love to hear a little bit of color with regard to when that vehicle, because it, it doesn't matter. It won't matter. But today, if we, you know, you got to remember, Brian, there are people out there like me who, you know, you'd rather have your assets high than low unless you really are <laughs> scrambling to buy more. So you'd rather, you know, and besides that, sometimes the wife, I, I, I mean, Sometimes the wives would like to see your assets higher rather than lower. And sometimes they wonder if you've lost your brain, you know, buying a stock that is now down, you know, 50% from where it was. So those are some reasons why maybe some people like to see the stock go up in the short term, even though they're not planning to sell. Um, so one thing they could do that was color some specifics on the Gen 3 uh, hatchback, compact $25,000 car, however we're describing it. Absolutely agree. Uh, hey, if we're going, if you have 100% confidence, we're going to be driverless in a year or two. If, let's just say a year. You have 100% confidence, it's going to be one year. Uh, will this, can this vehicle be made with a st steering wheel? Can it? Well, the answer is yes, because even if you put in a joystick type controller, the answer is yes. And if it does take three years, if it does take five years, you can still sell it in the meantime. So I agree with you. There's no reason to say you if you want to say the entire platform is killed, you can say that uh, Wall Street will react accordingly. And it may not be great, not but if not pretty uh, and. I can understand why Wall Street would be skeptical of the, the infinite growth that can come with a robo taxi, because is it just around the corner? Because we've been hearing that for a long time and things beyond the horizon are hard to see. They're impossible to see by nature. They're beyond the horizon. You may have a map that says, you know, X marks the spot here be gold. Mine says here be dragons. So I'm not sure which one to, to believe in, but it's, uh, it'll be, if you take plot a course that will get you there, regardless, um, you're going to do better. So yes, I would also like to see the compact, uh, affirmed in the, in the earnings call. So the other thing that I would see would, would love to hear Elon say is because we are hearing that he took over sales. Now, as a sales guy, that's, you know, that's who I am, always selling. That's going to be on my tombstone it, or, or on my flat. What do they call those things? The little, where they put the ashes? What was that? Uh, columbarium? <laughs> that's the wall. <laughs> anyway, it's going to say always selling. That's instead of my name. That's what it's going to say. As a sales guy, I'd love to have Elon go, I am now in charge of sales in North America, and we are not going to have... Any problem, the rest of it, we are going to kill it this year. We're going to sell so much metal, you're going to be shocked. I mean, within the bounds of what you can say as the CEO of a publicly traded company. Something energetic and enthusiastic about how he's going to sell everything he can make. Well, all you have to do to shock people is remove the ground wire. <laughs> uh, <what? laughs> Wait. Never mind. I misunderstood. I misunderstood the assignment, Randy. <laughs> now, what I want to hear from Elon is what everyone wants to hear, which is we're going to go out and play catch. OK, <laughs> <laughs> we still love you, son. Now, uh, there's yeah, there's going to be I'd like to he I'd like to hear some guidance on Nevada, on Mexico. Uh, I'd like to I'd like for him to do the thing that we often do on our show your show, which is 
go around the world and tell me what's going on yeah. all over the place. Yeah. And I think that will calm some nerves. Some people are easily afraid. The people who bought at 250 at 350 those people are very frustrated. And I am expecting a good performance because he's about to put his back pay up to vote. <laughs> and uh, that's risky. And that's what I'm going to start calling it is his back pay because yeah. even the people, uh, there's a lot of people who say 56 billion is too much. Okay. First of all, that's an outdated number that was based on a stock price at the time an article was written. Right. And the fact that you're, if you're still saying 56 billion, it tells me that you don't even understand what it's for. Right. Uh, and it's not really 56 billion. It's paper money. Well, that's more than Tesla ever made. Right. Get over it. It was a lot of us, myself included, I bought my shares after the comp plan was in place, knowing exactly what the comp plan was. Yeah. And I even had to explain it to my wife back then saying, look, here's the deal is if he can do these impossible things, our $15,000 investment will pay off the house. <laughs> yeah, <right>. And <laughs> that was literally what the discussion was. And we said, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Who cares? So if you want the man to pay more taxes, start by increasing his pay from $0 to a number larger than zero. And then we will see it happen. All right. Well, that is uh, all we're going to take time for today because we have more shows to do. We have another show for tomorrow for this channel and a couple of shows for your channel and I'm sure that people will be amused by at least one of those. <laughs> Probably uh, this Randy. one, because you were funny today. I'm still waking up, man. I don't even know where I am. I'm going to do this early for, with you from now on. <laughs> 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 all right, Brian. Great, great to have you on, as always. And to all of you people out there, it's been great chuckling with you today.